just a minute to go and we're going to start our worship service. Want to give a little time. Welcome to the folks in Wyndham who are meeting for the first time in church today. We're, uh, we're praying that everything will go well there for them this first time back in their church service. We welcome each one of you. It's 11 o'clock. It's time to start our worship service. We're going to have a story once again and some songs for the kids, a message, and uh, we just pray that the Holy Spirit will bless us as we worship together. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we went down to the church on Thursday, on uh, the, the Wyndham Church, and we set up the, uh, there was a few of us there to, to help to set up the church for the meeting today. Mm -hmm. That's right. We have the hand sanitizer and the masks and the signs put up and the pews uh, all marked out with some special messages for the people as they found their seats. And uh, so we're just uh, praising God that uh, those who can and, and, and want to be can be there at church today. Um, we, Pipestone met last Monday and we started talking about the process of opening for those who want to be there at church again. And uh, all of us want to be there, but uh, we know that, that some are not ready to come out and to be able to, to do that. And so we want to, we want to always make it clear that uh, we're, 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 we don't want anybody to feel guilty for not coming to church, especially when we're still in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, but uh, we want people to, to choose that for themselves. Um, so the Pipestone uh, Board is planning to meet again this Thursday night and we'll uh, go over our plan and then uh, set a date. So stay tuned for that for those in Pipestone. And Marshall is planning to have a meeting in on July 11, and they're going to have a park, a meeting in the park, nice. getting together. Yeah, it'd be that'll be nice. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, the weather will cooperate, and they'll have a good time there on J July 11. Uh, it was good to have uh, many of you join us Wednesday night as we looked at uh, "Prepare Ye the Way of the Lord," the message of Elijah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's our message today, isn't it? To prepare the way of the Lord. That's our message. Because Jesus is coming soon. And we right. want people to be ready. And it's good news. It's not bad news. Like, oh no, Jesus is coming soon. This is good news. But people need to be ready. And uh, we need to, to tell them what they need to do to be ready. Uh so as always, our, our, all of the church videos and Wednesday night videos are uh, available on our, web, on, on our YouTube uh, channel, Southwest District MNSDA. And um, today is a special day. Today uh, has been uh, that requested by the North American Division that we have a special day of prayer today. Prayer for the deep hurt and frustration that racial injustice and inequity has caused in North America. And so today we want to remember that as a special item of prayer. To uh, It is certainly needed. There are people that are going to extremes on both ends and everything in between. But we need to stay where Jesus was and to give the message of God's love and to call people to love God with all their heart and to love their neighbors themselves. And that, that will certainly take away racism and injustice and, and prejudice from our hearts. And uh, we all 
that's just one of the things we all need. We're all sinful beings and we need to come every day to the throne of grace so that we can have those things uh, cleansed away and that we have nothing to do with them. So, special day of prayer today. Uh, I put up some announcements last night on Facebook, so go to my uh, Facebook page and scroll down. There's a number of important announcements there hmm. that you can uh, catch up on. We won't take the time to go through all of them right now. But we do want to thank you for your faithfulness and your tithes and offerings. Um, you can go to the church, to the, uh, church web page and click, click on online giving. Uh, or you can just go to adventistgiving.org or mail your check to the treasurer. And for those who are worshiping in church right now, in Wyndham, there's going to be an offering during the service, and your leaders there will direct you on how that will be doing taken. We've discussed doing that during our song, when we sing our song, and they'll they'll instruct you on that. Uh, and today is uh, it's not today, but in a few days, 27, 28 to 9, 33 days is our anniversary. Mm, that's right. 24 years. It's gone fast, hasn't it? Yes, it has. Time goes fast when you're having fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess you could say that. Yeah. <laughs> so, but it's been a good 24 years. So. It has. Yes, it has. Yeah. And uh, I, I just thank you for those 24 years and for all the support that you've given to me and, and uh, all that we've enjoyed together. Well, thank you. It's been a and good 24 years. I feel very blessed to have you um, as a husband, so thank praise you. God. Well, let's sing some kids' songs. Uh, Sandyland is our first one, and uh, I'll get my guitar here. And I'll set this up a little bit. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe it's too high about I was trying to... So I hope any kids out there are ready to sing. Sing along with us. And the adults too. And if you're at Wyndham, you could hum probably. <laughs> hum... They, mm -hmm. You got your masks on, and you're not supposed to sing, remember? Oh. But I don't know Sorry. if it would hurt to hum. Well, we'll see. Well, if they want to sing with their mask on, what difference will well, it make? They, well, we, we, they've told us we shouldn't be doing that, so... Okay. <laughs> but we at home can sing to our hearts of content. Okay. Don't build your house on the sandy land don't build it too near the shore Well, it might look kind of nice But you'll have to build it twice So you'll have to build your house once more Don't build your house on the sandy land Don't build it too near the shore Well, it might look kind of nice But you'll have to build it twice So you'll have to build your house once more You better build your house upon a rock Make a good foundation on a solid spot Oh, the storms may come and go But the peace of God you will know Don't build your house on the sandy land Don't build it too near the shore Well, it might look kind of nice But you'll have to build it twice Oh, you have to build your house once more Well, it might look kind of nice But you'll have to build it twice Oh, you have to build your house once more. Now, this is a song we haven't sung for a while. Haman. This is from the Caribbean, you know. And there, I remember even in Hawaii, down on Waikiki Beach, there was a street pe preacher one time that was preaching and people were gathering around to watch. And this is kind of like that, you know. Mm -hmm. Haman. Do you love my Jesus? Hey, hey, man, do you know my Lord? Hey, hey, man, do you know my Lord? 
Tell the people from door to door Hey man, do you know my look? Well in all of the people in the islands lay In the sunshine every day But Jesus came to show the way And teach his children how to pray Hey hey man, do you know my Lord? Hey hey man, do you know my Lord? Tell the people from door to door Hey man, do you know my Lord? Well, the big fat woman in the marketplace She yells so loud she gets red in the face She preached the gospel every day If you listen you can hear her say Hey hey man, do you know my Lord? Hey hey man, do you know my Lord? Tell the people from door to door Hey man, do you know my Lord? The voodoo doctor, he came to say That his demons, they want to play But the Christians, they start to pray In Jesus' name, they scare those demons away Hey, hey, man, do you know my Lord? Hey, hey, man, do you know my Lord? Tell the people from door to door Hey, man, do you know my Lord? I think that's the first Isn't time that we've fun? sung that Yeah, yeah. Well, I will make you fishers of men, Jesus said. And, uh, you know, fishing is, fishing is fun. Mm -hmm. So he wants us to have fun being fishers of men, too. Are we going to go fishing soon, then? Is that what that means? <laughs> I will make you fishers of men, fishers of men, fishers of men. I will make you fishers of men if you follow me. If you follow me, if you follow me. I will make you fishers of men if you follow me. Hear Christ calling, come unto me, come unto me. Come unto me, hear Christ calling, come unto me, I will give you rest. I will give you rest, I will give you rest. Hear Christ calling, come unto me, I will give you rest. I will make you fishers of men, fishers of men, fishers of men. I will make you fishers of men if you follow me. If you follow me, if you follow me. I will make you fishers of men if you follow me. Yes. Okay. Okay. Now, into my heart. Into my heart, into my heart, come into my heart, Lord Jesus, come in today, come in to stay, come into my heart, Lord Jesus, do it again, into my heart. Into my heart, come into my heart, Lord Jesus, come in today, come in to stay, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Now, Miss Karen has a children's story for you <clears throat> well you know in past the past couple of weeks we've been talking about the armor of God and I'm going to read to you the verses about the armor of God and it's in Ephesians chapter 6 first I'll read verses 10 to 12 be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might Put on the full armor of God so that you are able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. 
Well, that sounds really important that we need that full armor, don't we? And then um, verses 14 through 17, this is what the full armor of God is. Stand firm, therefore, having girded your loins with truth. Remember that belt of truth? Mm -hmm. And having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. In addition to all, taking up the shield of faith with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Mm. Well, today we're going to talk a little bit about the breastplate of righteousness. Now, when the soldiers would put on their armor, the breastplate that they wore was a hard, a hard um, metal piece, and it served to protect his most vital organs like his heart, his lungs, and other organs that are needed for life. So it was a very important piece of the armor. And without it, he was very vulnerable and he could be killed very easily. Well, as Christians, we need the breastplate of righteousness. And to be righteous is to have God's love in our heart. And having God's love in our hearts enables us to treat others well. And we will live in a way that brings honor to God. And that righteousness will enable us to obey his um, commandments and his word. But righteousness, it's not something that we have in and of ourselves. It has to come from God. We have to have God's love in our hearts and only he can give that. Nothing that we can do of ourselves can give us this righteousness and that's a yes. very important key, isn't it, yes. Pastor Ken? Amen. So like all of the other parts of the armor, um, it must come from Christ. It must come from Christ. So we need the breastplate of righteousness to protect our hearts mm -hmm. against the wiles of the devil. And he knows exactly um, how to trick us and, mm -hmm. and to um, to help make us mess up. Um, mm -hmm. And so protecting our heart is very important and so we need to ask God to help us do that and when we come to him and ask you know Jesus says I will do all things um, or you ask in my name and I will mm -hmm. do it he says so so God will arm us with his breast of righteousness. And it's through Jesus' life, death, and resurrection that we're able to receive that righteousness, oh, yeah. that robe of righteousness. Um, he took our place and he covers us mm -hmm. with his righteousness. So that's mm -hmm. how we get that. So the breastplate of righteousness is very important. And the belt of truth that we talked about last week, mm -hmm. that um, we gird our loins with, the, with God's truths and it makes us ready for action. And that belt of truth is going to help hold up the, the, breast of, um, the breastplate of righteousness. So you'll find in, as we continue to go through these um, parts of the armor that they all work together to protect us and to help us um, love God and have his love Amen. shine out through our hearts. Amen. So let's have a word of prayer. Now. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for how you protect us. And 
as we come to you with open hearts and we can ask you um, for your protection and to, to arm us with the breastplate of righteousness and with your belt of truth and the other pieces of the armor, that you will do that as we turn our hearts toward you and we seek to do your will and to love others with your love, the love that only you can give us, that we don't have in ourselves, but only you can give us that mm -hmm. love. So we thank you for that, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay. Remember when we were in Myanmar, we, we learned a little bit about that girding your loins. Because they have I'll those... <laughs> Remember what what is that that the men wear? Oh. You know they mm. they wrap. It's remember. just the cloth wrapped around, and and uh, yeah. and then they and then they they wind it up in a knot and tuck it in right under their tummy there, and that keeps it tight. Mm -hmm. And uh, then when they want to do some work, they reach down and they grab the back back of that uh, thing from the bottom and they pull it up into the front mm -hmm. and tuck it in. So then so it's that, like they have shorts on. Yeah, so instead of having a skirt, they have shorts on then and they mm -hmm. gird up their loins to do their work. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, I don't put remember. a whole new meaning for that. I don't you know? remember the name of that garment, but um, you have one. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah, we'll have to refresh our memory on that. Yeah. <laughs> well... We have our scripture, and our scripture is taken from Micah 6 and 7 and Hosea 14, and it's entitled, The Requirements of God. Karen, would you like to read that? Sure. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow down before the exalted God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams and 10,000 rivers of oil? Shall I offer my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has showed you, O man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Who is a God like you? Who pardons sin and forgives the transgression of the remnant of his inheritance? You do not stay angry forever, but delight to show mercy. You will again have compassion on us. You will tread our sins underfoot and hurl all our iniquities into the depths of the sea. Return, O Israel, to the Lord, your God. Your sins have been your downfall. Take words with you and return to the Lord. Say to him, Forgive all our sins and receive us graciously that we may offer the fruit of our lips. I will heal their waywardness and love them freely for my anger has turned away from them. Amen. The song we'd like to sing today is, is entitled, Would You Cherish? a new song very familiar a friend of ours um, recorded this song yeah and the heritage singer sang it once and I also oh, heard it? it on a tape on a, a record I didn't realize that Earth Theater of the Universe I think was there oh that's right yeah. you told me that yeah Would you cherish loving arms if you'd never shed a tear? Would you welcome going home if you'd never I don't think so, I really don't think 
Would you value having hope if you'd never known despair? Would you treasure being safe if you never lost your way? Would you cherish the words if you'd never been afraid? I don't think so. I don't think so. I really don't think so. If we knew the love that our Lord has shown to man, if we really try to do what the Lord has planned for us, then we love. I think so. Yes, I think so. I really do think so. Well, it's time for prayer. And, uh, as uh, we said earlier, today is a day of prayer, especially to pray about our situation in North America uh, and to pray for, for justice and equity. And uh, we want to pray that people's hearts may be turned to the Lord. It says that's part of the Elijah message, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children mm -hmm. and the children to the fathers. And uh, that's what more than anything else our nation needs is God's love in people's hearts and in our families. And so we want to remember that in prayer today. Uh, we, we want to remember our medical workers uh, and uh, family members. We want to remember them that have been mm -hmm. mentioned. Um, we continue to remember Junette as she's home, but she has treatments every week. And uh, I'm sure that's taxing upon her. We want to remember her in our prayers. And uh, Tim and Judy, our neighbor, Jackie. And we have a couple of new requests today. Yeah, I just wanted to mention that the, the couple in Arizona that oh, had yes. COVID-19, she was in, Martha was in the hospital and Dwayne was at home dealing with the COVID. Um, she, they're doing better. She's home now from the hospital and doing much better. So we yes. offer praises for answer to prayer. Okay. Well, and Janice Ferguson had, uh, she's uh, the wife of our head deacon at, at Wyndham, uh, Tom. And uh, she had uh, her first surgery, hip surgery to put mm -hmm. uh, uh, that, uh, metal piece in place um, and she's having the, the second surgery and uh, so then we'll we'll be checking back to see how that went after the weekend. So continue to keep Janice. For Both hips your are prayer. being operated upon yes. there. So. And also Janet asks if Janet Ross from Pipestone asks if we could um, pray for their grandson Nicasio. Yes. He broke his leg and is oh, in a lot of pain. I'm sorry to hear that, Janet. Yeah. So he's four years old is all. So wow. four year old grandson. So Nicasio will Nicasio. will remember him. Yes. And then um, and Joanne Gilbertson Joanne Gilbertson has asked us to pray for Margot Trellstad. That's her cousin. And um she died, um, oh, the family. passed away, her and asking for to uh, to pray for her for her family. Uh, she's uh, Joanne's first cousin, okay. and uh, they just heard about her death. And maybe keep in prayer the you know as we move forward with having church. Yeah. This is the first time um, that Wyndham has had um, church 
there and just pray for um, that the Lord would oversee the electronic part of it, make sure everything <laughs> goes well, and as we move forward too with, yes. with our other churches. So. Yeah. Okay, so. well, let's bow our heads. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you for this year's Holy Sabbath day. When we remember that you are the one who created us, you know how our hearts work more than anyone else. And you're the one that redeemed us as well, paid the price for our salvation. And so on this special day of prayer, we want to come asking, Lord, that you will pour out your spirit upon your people, that you will pour out your spirit upon our nation and, and then all, all across North America that you will help to lead hearts back to you. That uh, prejudice and racism and injustice can be washed away. Mm -hmm. And we're sorry for any part that we've had in those things. And we know that these things are so subtle that they can be hidden in our hearts and we not even realize they're there. Just like Peter, when he said, I would never leave you or forsake you. And then he ended up denying Jesus that night because he didn't know what was hidden in his heart. And neither do we. And, we. and so we are not so bold as to say that we're not infected by any of this. And we just pray that your Holy Spirit may come into our hearts that we may be drawn closer to you and to one another that every nation, kindred, tongue, and people can find their completeness in Jesus and that all those walls may be torn down and we thank you that you will do that in answer to prayer we need, what we need is your Holy Spirit, your Holy Spirit to come into our hearts that uh, those, that that selfishness that leads to all sin will be neutralized and that we may have your righteousness covering us, that you look at us just as if we had never sinned because Jesus took our place and then because your Holy Spirit writes your law of love in our hearts we can obey you and follow you. Without you, we can do nothing. And so we thank you for being with us. We thank you for answering this prayer. And we pray for these special requests, our family members that are in special need of healing, for our neighbors also. And we thank especially of, of Janice uh, we pray you'll continue to bless her there in, in uh, Sioux Falls in the hospital. As she's had one operation and is, is having another on her hips to safeguard her. And I just pray that uh, you'll be with her and strengthen her and be with her family. We thank you for all the support that you've given to her. And we pray you'll continue to be with her and bless her. And we pray especially today for Nicasio. We, we, we hurt with our kids when they hurt. And uh, we pray your healing hand may be upon him, that he may heal quickly and be encouraged. We thank you for his family that supports him so well. And we just pray you'll bless them and give them an extra measure of your spirit as they, as they uh, care for him. We also pray for, for Joanne Gilbertson's cousin, Margo. And we just, we just want to pray, pray that you'll be with her family as she's passed away. Uh, we thank you for what you will do for them. As they mourn her loss, that you'll draw close to them and that they may have that hope that only you can give. 
we thank you and praise you for the answers to prayer that you've given. And now as we uh, turn to your word, we just pray your Holy Spirit may especially bless us and draw us closer to you. And we thank you for your Holy Spirit's, your presence. We thank you for the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, that heavenly trio that is working constantly together for our salvation. And we're so thankful for all of that. And we give you all the honor and glory and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay, I'll well, Karen will step aside in the other room and we'll I'll be back close our doors. Back. And yeah. <laughs> well, just imagine that you're working at the local stop and shop. And your boss says that you're in charge of the store for the week. And after the week is over, everything seems to have gone smoothly. But Monday morning, you discover that the night before, when you turned out the lights, you accidentally turned off the cooler, the electricity to the cooler as well. And you know that it is just a matter of time before that milk in the cooler goes sour. Now, if you don't tell your boss, he'll find out sooner or later because of the complaints and you could lose your job. But if you tell him, he may be a little upset, but will probably appreciate your honesty. And so you go right to him. And as soon as he comes in and you explain him to him the situation and how sorry you are for how that all happened and but to your surprise, he says, oh, don't worry, accidents will happen. Just move the milk right to the front and put out a sign, on sale, no returns. What would you do? The pressure is on. You don't want to look like a fanatic. And besides, if you tell him that that would be dishonest, you might really lose your job. The easiest thing to do would to be to do just what he says. After all, he is the boss. You know, there's not one of us who can live his life without finding himself in one of those situations when the pressure is on. As young people, we experience peer pressure. And the pressure is on to go somewhere or to do something that we know is not right. And as we grow older, the pressure comes from other sources and other places, from family members, from close friends, from business associates. And whatever the situation, the easiest thing to do when the pressure is on is to give in and to escape the pressure. There are three questions that we're going to consider this morning. The first one, when the pressure is on, number one, what is going to happen when we give in to it? Number two, what may happen if we don't give in to it? And number three, what will help us to not give in to that pressure? And to help us answer these questions, we're going to look at a real-life experience from the Bible. We find it in 2 Chronicles chapter 18. And the story involves three main characters. King Ahab, King Jehoshaphat, and the prophet Micaiah. It took place during the time of the divided kingdom. Sometime after the experience of Elijah on Mount Carmel. Jehoshaphat was king of the southern kingdom of Judah, with its capital in Jerusalem, and Ahab was king of the northern kingdom of Israel, with its capital at Samaria. And Micaiah was a prophet of Yahweh, the God of Israel, in the northern kingdom. 
Just to the northeast of Ahab's northern kingdom was Syria with its capital, Damascus. And it was ruled over by Ben-Hadad II, whose father had captured some of Israel's northern territory around the Sea of Galilee a number of years before. Right around where you would see the Golan Heights today. It all began shortly after Mount Carmel, the Mount Carmel experience, when Ben-Hadad came down from Damascus, threatening to take Samaria and to defeat Ahab. But God promised victory through one of his prophets, and Ahab succeeded in the battle. Ben-Hadad escaped and went back to Damascus, and then the warning came from the Lord that Ben-Hadad would come back in the spring. And sure enough, he came back thinking that the reason that he was defeated was that Yahweh was the God of the mountains. Our God, he reasoned, is the God of the valley. And if we fight Ahab in the valley or on the plain, we're going to win this time. But he was wrong. Ahab defeated him on the plain of Jezreel because he followed the counsel of Yahweh given through his prophet. But Ahab did not completely obey. The Lord's instructions were to put Ben-Hadad to death. And the message came to him through the prophet of the Lord, you have set free a man that I had determined should die. Therefore, it is your life for his life, your people for his people. And so he went back to his palace in Samaria, sullen and angry. And for three years, there was no war between Ahab and Ben-Hadad. Now, about 10 years before this, good King Jehoshaphat had made an alliance with King Ahab. Ahab and Jezebel had a daughter whose name was Athaliah. And Jehoshaphat had a son whose name was Jehoram. And so they decided, as part of their alliance, that they would make themselves fathers-in-law. What a wonderful idea. 2 Chronicles 18, verse 1 and 2, Now Jehoshaphat had great wealth and honor, and he allied himself with Ahab by marriage. Some years later, he went down to visit Ahab in Samaria. And Ahab slaughtered many sheep and cattle for him, and the people with him, and urged him to attack Ramoth Gilead. About ten years after the alliance was formed between Ahab and uh, Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat went down from his mountain capital in the north, in, I'm in the south, Jerusalem, to visit Ahab in Samaria in the north. And of course, all this, all his prominent leading men accompanied him on his visit. And Ahab just smothered him with hospitality. He really put out the red carpet for his daughter's father-in-law. Unfortunately, his hospitality did not come from the goodness of his heart. He had ulterior motives. He slaughtered many sheep and cattle and put on a fabulous feast and at just the time when Jehoshaphat was thinking that he could not have picked a better father-in-law for his son, Ahab said, By the way, Jehoshaphat, Ramoth Gilead still belongs to us, but Ben-Hadad hasn't returned it as he promised, and we aren't doing anything to get it back. Ramoth Gilead was a town east of the Jordan, on the border between Syria and Israel. What do you say? Ahab said. Will you go with me against Ramoth Gilead? And Jehoshaphat, with his stomach full of rack of lamb and top sirloin, replied, Sure, I'd be happy to. My people are as your people, and my horses are as your horses. And just as he was saying this, his conscience told him, 
hadn't you better find out what the Lord thinks about this? And so he added, but first let's seek the counsel of Yahweh. Ahab had already determined that he was going to do what he wanted, no matter what a prophet of Yahweh might say. But he thought, no problem, I have 400 prophets that work for me. They'll surely give us the good, the go-ahead. And so he sent for the prophets, and they all went out to the city square, which was also a threshing floor near the entrance of the city gate. And the city gate was always a place of great importance. It was the place where kings and judges sat to administer justice. And Jehoshaphat in his royal robes is ushered to a throne prepared for him. His leading men follow and take their places. And Ahab appears in royal procession and takes his throne on the throne next to Jehoshaphat. And then the prophets arrive, all 400 of them. And Ahab asked the all-important question in verse 5. The king of Israel brought together the prophets, 400 men, and asked them, Shall we go to war against Ramoth Gilead, or shall I refrain? Go, they answered, for God will give it into the king's hand. Kind of like, saying today go ahead mr president open go ahead mr president open the economy the virus has been vanquished and uh, ahab leans over to jehoshaphat and he says well jehoshaphat it's unanimous all 400 prophets say go there's your answer what do we have to lose but Jehoshaphat had his suspicions about these prophets. And so he asked in 2 Chronicles 18, verse 6, Is there not a prophet of Yahweh here whom we can inquire of? And the king of Israel answered Jehoshaphat, There is still one man, though through whom we can inquire of Yahweh. But I hate him because he never prophesies anything good about me but always bad. He's Micaiah, the son of Imla. He didn't prophesy anything good because there was nothing good to prophesy. And Ahab hated Micaiah because he had come to hate the truth and to despise Yahweh, the true God of Israel. Second part of verse 7. The king should not say that, Jehoshaphat replied. And so the king of Israel called one of his officials and said, Bring Micaiah the son of Imla at once. In the meantime, when the messenger went to find Micaiah, the other prophets continued to prophesy. One of them, whose name was Zedekiah, had made two horns out of iron, maybe they stood for Ahab and Jehoshaphat. And in any case, he took the two horns in his hands and he said, With these you will gore the Arameans until they are destroyed. And verse 11 says, All the other prophets were prophesying the same thing. Attack, Ram attack Ramoth Gilead and be victorious, they said, for Yahweh will give it into the king's hand. And when the messenger found Micaiah, he told him that the king wanted to see him. And then he filled him in on the situation. Talk about pressure. Look at what he told him in verse 12. The messenger who had gone to summon Micaiah said to him, Look, as one man, the other prophets are predicting success for the king. Let your word agree with theirs and speak favorably. 400 prophets have predicted success. Now don't spoil everything by predicting defeat. The pressure's on. But Micaiah knew and loved God, and he determined to speak nothing but the truth. 
And the truth was that Ahab would be defeated. Verse 13, but Micaiah said, as surely as Yahweh lives, I can tell him only what my God says. So now Micaiah enters the courtyard. There are Ahab and Jehoshaphat, the 400 prophets, all the powers of church and state apparently united against him. And Zedekiah, still running around with his iron horns, figuratively goring the Arameans in his acted out prophecy. Verse 14 says, when he arrived, when Micaiah arrived, the king asked him, Micaiah, shall we go to war against Ramoth Gilead or shall I refrain? Attack and be victorious, he answered, for they will be given into your hand. Yes, go ahead, Ahab, attack and be victorious. And the tone of his voice said, isn't that what you wanted to hear? Just try it and see what happens. And it was obvious to Ahab that Micaiah wasn't at all serious. In verse 15, the king said to him, How many times must I make you swear to tell me nothing but the truth in the name of Yahweh? Stop fooling around, Micaiah. Get down to business. And then Micaiah answered, and this time he was dead serious. Verse 16, I saw all Israel scattered on the hills like sheep without a shepherd. And Yahweh said, these people have no master. Let each one go home in peace. Go to battle and go to your death, Ahab. Israel will be without a king. Verse 17, the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, didn't I tell you that he never prophesies anything good about me, but only bad? And then Micaiah continued pulling the curtain back to show what was really going on. Ahab, I saw Yahweh on his throne and the court of heaven sat. And all the hosts of heaven were on his right and on his left. And I saw Yahweh permit a lying spirit to come to these 400 prophets of yours. But Yahweh himself has declared disaster for you. And then the pressure increases. Then in verse 23, then Zedekiah, son of Kenina, went up and slapped Micaiah in the face. Which way did the spirit from Yahweh go when he went from me to speak to you, he asked. In other words, if anyone is lying, it's you, Micaiah. Verse 24, Micaiah replied, You will find out on the day you go hide in an inner room. Zedekiah. If we were in Micaiah's place, we might be tempted to think, is this the reward I get from telling the truth? To get slapped in the face? I'll just keep my mouth shut, mouth shut from now on. But notice what's ha what happens next. Not only does Micaiah not keep quiet, it seems that he doesn't know when to quit. Verse 25, Then the king of Israel then ordered Take Micaiah and send him back to Ammon, the ruler of the city, and to Joash, the king's son, and say, this is what the king says. Put this fellow in prison and get him, give him nothing but bread and water until I return safely. And Micaiah declared, if you ever return safely, Yahweh has not spoken through me. And then he added, "May mark my words, all you people. And there we have Micaiah's response when the pressure is on. But then for Jehoshaphat, the pressure incre increases. Now, what will he do? Will he side with this one prophet who has been dragged away to prison? Or will he go with the majority and escape the tremendous pressure? His conscience tells him that Micaiah is right 
but Ahab is, discern, is determined to go ahead. Maybe he should go along. After all, he had already given his word and promised to go. What would the people of Israel think if he went back on his word? What would his family think? And the sad record is that good King Jehoshaphat gave in to the pressure that day. And what was the result? Verse 28 of Second Chronicles 18. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, went up to Ramoth Gilead. The king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, I will enter the battle in disguise, but you wear your royal robes. And so the king of Israel disguised himself and went into battle. Ahab had confidently predicted that he would return safely, but he had his doubts, it seems. So he did everything he could to keep the prophecy from being fulfilled. In verse 30, the king of Aram had ordered his chariot commanders, do not fight with anyone, small or great, except the king of Israel, Ahab. And when the chariot commanders saw Jehoshaphat, they thought, oh, this is the king of Israel. And so they turned to attack him, but Jehoshaphat cried out, and Yahweh helped him, and God drew them away from him. For when the chariot commanders saw that he was not the king of Israel, they stopped pursuing him. But someone drew his bow at random and hit the king of Israel between the sections of his armor. And the king told his, the chariot driver, Wheel around and get me out of the fighting. I've been wounded. And all day long the battle raged, and the king of Israel propped himself up in his chariot, facing the Arameans until evening. And then at sunset he died. When the pressure is on to go against conscience and the word of God, what will happen when we give into it? Like Jehoshaphat, we may escape the pressure for the time being, but in the end, we can expect to suffer embarrassment and humiliation and defeat. And what will happen if we don't give in but remain true to our Lord? Like Micaiah, we may find that the pressure increases. We may be even ridiculed and mistreated. But in the end, we'll be vindicated if we, if we remain true. And what will help us now so that we won't give in then? Hebrews 4, verse 16, let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and to find grace to help in our time of need. That needs to happen not when we're in trouble, but before the trouble. So that when the trouble comes, we'll have help. The only way that we will have the strength then to withstand the pressure is if we spend the time now with our Lord, getting to know him better and allowing our love for him to grow and receiving the strength to help us in our time of need. When Jesus was before his accusers, he was under superhuman pressure. Pressure to give in, perform a miracle to save himself and to show them who he really was. But he didn't give in. He didn't try to escape the pressure because he was trusting in his heavenly father. And what happened? Not only was he slapped in the face, but a crown of thorns was pressed into his brow and his back was lacerated with the scourge and his Hands were nailed to the cross, and he was put to death. But the day after the morrow, when the stone was rolled away, he came forth from the tomb vindicated. He came forth for our justification, Scripture says. It may be that in a moment of weakness, you've given in to the pressure 
he's ready to forgive. And like good King Jehoshaphat, to give you strength to go on, to give honor and glory to his name by remaining loyal and obedient to the end. Would you say with me today, Lord, help me to be like Micaiah the prophet, to learn the lesson from good King Jehoshaphat, to not give in to the pressure, but to always follow you wherever you lead us and to obey your word and to do what you want to say. If, that, if that's what you would like, join me in singing t- together, Oh Jesus, I have promised. If you have uh, those of you there at the church, if you have your, your phones, you could look up the, the hymn on, in your phone there. Um, number 331, Oh Jesus, I have promised. Karen will join us here as we sing together. Jesus, I have promised. Jesus, I have promised to serve thee to the end. Be thou forever near me, my master and my friend. I shall not fear the battle, for thou art by my side, nor wander from away, for thou wilt be my guide. Oh, let me feel thou near me, the world is ever near. I see the sights that dazzle, the tempting sounds I hear. My foes are ever around me and within but Jesus draw me near me and shield my soul from sin oh Jesus thou hast promised to all who follow thee that where thou art in glory there shall my servant be and Jesus I have promised to serve thee to the end oh give me grace to follow my master and my friend Shall we bow our heads for prayer? Dear Father in heaven, thank you for being with us today. Thank you for the privilege we have of serving you. We realize that without you we can do nothing. And we have given into the pressure too many times before. But help us, Lord, to stand strong like Micaiah did and to speak for you in these last days, to speak up for for the oppressed, for the poor and for the needy, and to 
to, not just to speak with our voices, but to act in our, in our actions as well. We thank you for the example of, of Micaiah, and we thank you for this story. It helps us to see how you work, and that you're the same God today that will work for us. So we put ourselves in your care once again. We pray you'll bless us, guide us and direct us, bless us throughout this Sabbath day, and uh, bring us back together again soon, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us. We look forward to seeing you again Wednesday night at 7 o'clock Central Daylight Time. So have a good Sabbath and a good week ahead. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath.